You say you're going to start waking up earlier to have a healthier start to your day, but then you stay up all night binging something on Netflix and you sleep right through your alarm. Maybe you're finally in a great relationship, but you keep finding fault with your partner. You say you want to go to graduate school, but you keep missing that admissions deadline. Self-sabotaging behavior can strike anywhere in our lives, leaving us feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, depressed, and anxious. Today, we're talking about what self-sabotage really is and two concrete ways to go from self-defeating to self-winning. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. I'm here. Of course, I'm here. Where else would I be? Where else would you be, Abby? But right here, coming at you with a very requested episode. I did a self-sabotage episode, like ways your self-sabotaging is hurting your relationship. I'll link to it in the show notes. Um, way back, I think in episode, in a season maybe two or three, I think it's episode 100 something. Um, but I, that was, you know, very kind of directed. I wanted to do self-sabotage on a bigger level and really get concrete about a couple ways to stop. So, so I'm excited, you know, as always, this is a, a great, I think a great topic to talk about. I really appreciate when people write in and, or DM me with their, you know, thoughts or here's what I'm struggling with. And I've had all kinds of different, you know, people writing in about how they're jealous in their relationship and they're sabotaging it that way, even though it's a good one or how they've been trying to get ahead. I have one client, not client, one person who wrote in just talking about how, um, he was, kept wanting to get a better job and, you know, was trying to go to graduate school and all the things that you would do to do that. And he just wasn't doing any of them. So anyway, there was a lot of uh, things like that, messages like that. And so I think this is a topic that would really, you know, hit a lot of you. And that's what I like to do. So as always, please, um, if you're watching me on YouTube, hello, you see my beautiful heart necklace. I know those of you just listening are missing out. Um, uh, <laughs> And I'm not wearing black today. It's a shocker. I'm wearing a white sweater. It's not often. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us. You know, all this stuff that I ask you to do, leave reviews, um, leave reviews for my book. If you've read my book, leave reviews for the podcast, rate it on Spotify or leave a review on Apple or like and subscribe with the, with the, on YouTube. All of it is to help me get to more people to create world domination. Yes, I want world domination for peace. <laughs> I want world peace, damn it. And I really know, you think about how much the podcast has helped you. Why wouldn't you want to help others? So thank you for uh, sharing the podcast with those people you love. I think it's also helpful sometimes just to share an episode, like a specific episode, as opposed to saying, hey, listen to Abby's podcast. It's great. Go, hey, there's this episode on self-sabotage. I think you would love with some real great ways to improve it. Yeah, and send them that link. Let them start with something very specific or send them to the blog on the website or whatever you think would help someone. It's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the word out there more and more and really have, what a great wave that would be, wouldn't it? People happy in their lives. <laughs> let's let's go for that. Um, okay, so I let's get into it. Let's jump in. And again, thank you for the reviews. When you have left a review, if you haven't left yet, come on. Come on now. All right. So self-sabotage, what the hell is it? What is it, Abby? And am I doing it? I'm going to give you lots of examples of it, which a lot of them are sneaky and you might not realize you're doing it. Self-sabotage, if I wanted to define it in a big way, it would be any behavior you're doing that doesn't match a goal you've set. So it's when you're doing something or or, may, or actually when you're not, maybe when you're not doing something that hinders you or blocks you in some way from achieving any, you know, goal, aspiration, an objective that you've set for yourself. And it's, I will tell you that almost all self-sabotage is unconscious or what, what lay people call subconscious. But even when you know you're doing it, it's often difficult to stop. So I'm going to help you on that front today also. So to get where you can be aware of it and then what to do. Like, so I'm, I'm really, I was very specific. You know, I always have a ton of tips and I, I really boiled these down to the two that I work on the most with my clients that I see the best um, outcomes with. So, okay. So as I mentioned, 
so self-sabotage can be very sneaky and it can dis disguise itself like a lot of other things. I think the number one thing we all see, and I'm sure you can identify, is procrastination. And let me know, you know, shoot me an email, abby at abbymetcalf.com, if you'd like an episode on procrastination, how to stop procrastinating. I haven't done that actually ever. So that could be something. It's a big topic, but there's a lot of good research on it. And I think we could do a good job if it's something you're interested in. I'd be happy to do that. So procrastination is a biggie. Not asking for help. This is somewhere that I have always sabotaged myself, where I do things, I take on too much, I think I can bend the space-time continuum, and I don't ask for help. Uh, this would also relate to overdoing it, taking on too much. I had a woman recently, I guess it's not so recent, sorry. It was more during the pandemic. <laughs> It's what happens when you get old. You, it's like time just all moves together. It was a woman I worked with towards the uh, kind of last year of the, of the lockdown on pandemic. And she had her kids at home and was thinking she wouldn't get uh, asked, like she wasn't trying to get any help. She was working from home. She had the kids at home. Her parents were down there, but she was like, I don't want to ask them. This is a great opportunity. My parents, you know, were always absent. I was a latchkey kid and look at this great opportunity. I have to really be there for my kids. But of course, what's happening, what happened was she couldn't be all those things. You can't work full-time at home and full-time take care of your kids with no help and think you're going to be super effective in either area. But that's a great example of self-sabotage. And it comes from a good place. It comes from a loving place. But there's a setup there. And we'll talk about why. We're also going to talk about why you self-sabotage. So I'll get there in a second. But So not asking for help or overdoing it. Taking on too much. Great examples. Uh, overeating or comfort eating. Uh, using drugs and alcohol. Smoking or vaping. Again, just because you smoke some pot doesn't mean it's self-sabotaging. But if you are saying that you want to be more motivated and when you smoke pot you end up not being motivated then i would say that's self-sabotaging <laughs> or if you're trying to lose weight and you're drinking all the time or if you just said i'm not going to drink anymore i'm going to have sober january and i'm setting this goal or whatever people do with the months um and then you keep drinking you're sabotaging this goal you set so smoking cigarettes vaping all those things can definitely fall in the category Overspending or compulsive shopping is another thing I see. People set money goals and then they're overspending or they're, uh, it's not always even a money goal. Maybe I had a client not long ago who was trying to move out of um, their apartment and was, was actually, ultimately, she really wanted to buy a house is what she wanted. She didn't want to rent anymore. But she was out buying Gucci belts and, you know, trying to get designer shoes and spending money on plastic surgery and all these other things, which are great. But if you're trying to, you know, but then she would complain all the time and get worried. And she had a lot of housing insecurity and she wasn't really putting money in the bank. So she didn't have to have that, nor was she raising her credit score because she was always maxing out her credit cards and didn't have savings. So that is a great example of self-sabotage on every level. Um, what, I'm gonna, controlling behavior or jealous behavior. I mentioned that I got some emails from people about, you know, having, being in really great relationships, but acting very jealous with their partners. And some, one of the people who wrote me said, I actually know I'm doing it. I can't seem to stop doing it. So again, we'll talk about that. Picking fights. Some of y'all pick fights with your partner, coworkers, friends, parents, that kind of thing. Another self-sabotage is setting unrealistic goals. And by unrealistic goals, sometimes the goal is too high. So of course you're not gonna get it. You know, I wanna lose 20 pounds in a week or something, it's ridiculous. Or too low. Sometimes the goals are unrealistic because they're too low. And so you don't even reach those because it's not, it's a self, well, you might reach it, but it's a self-sabotage because you're not really living in the life the way you could. Uh, compulsive gambling obviously would also fall into this. Cheating, infidelity is often self-sabotage. Uh, even constantly seeking approval can be self-sabotage. All of these things, 
can fall into self-sabotage. And my hands itch, so I'm literally going to put on some lotion as we talk. How do you like that? For those of you on YouTube, I'm using some Bliss Lemon and Sage Body Butter. Yum. Anyway. Oh, it smells so good. All right. Getting my hands un undry. So why do we self-sabotage? That I think this is the number one thing people are asking when they come to therapy for sure. They're like, why do I do this, right? That's what most people go to therapy for. They're trying to figure out why they do the behavior that they want to stop doing. And I will say this, which I say a lot, it you don't need to always figure out your why to change the behavior. And a lot of times I think people spend too much time on their why and not enough on actual change. So I'm going to say that too. I, I think people you know, sometimes you're looking for the why because you think there'll be a silver bullet or a, a, an easy solution. And that's generally not the issue. But let's talk about it. So why do we self-sabotage? Because I know, I see you, you're face palming, you're calling yourself an idiot, you've been angry with yourself, impatient with yourself. Whenever those self-defeating kinds of behaviors show up, you just, again, right? But I want you to, I just right now, I want you to take a breath. I want you to give yourself a little break. Yeah, isn't that nice? A little break. Because self-sabotage or self-defeating behaviors, this is not you being a dumbass. You're not. You know you're not. You're, well, I hope you know you're not. I know you're not. You're self-sabotaging mostly because of something we psychologists call the approach avoidance conflict. Yes. Ooh, that sounds good, doesn't it? I know. Uh, 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 wonderful, amazing uh, researcher named Kurt Lewin. He introduced this concept. I think it's 1931. I'll write it in the notes for sure. I don't know why that date sticks in my head. I'm 99% sure I'm right. I'm pretty stupid sometimes, <laughs> crazy with how I can remember things. But it definitely was way back in the 1930s. Let's say that. And but it's been one of like attachment theory and other things. It has been, uh, it's got a strong foothold in, in modern psychology. I'll tell you that right now because it's been found to drive so much of our behaviors. And I will link as always to some of Lewin's research or the initial articles about that. Uh, on the website, abbymetcalf.com, go to relationship tips and tools. There's Oh, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time there is a corresponding blog for everything I do. So all the notes are there and you can just go read. Okay. Everything I do on the podcast. So basically the this approach avoidance conflict happens when you've got a goal that has both positive and negative sides to it. There's also approach approach conflict and and avoidant avoidant conflict. Don't don't get twisted. We're just doing approach avoidance right now. So so these two sides are like, think of it like the devil and the angels sitting on your shoulder, you know, that kind of cartoon thing. So I think the most common ways I see it, maybe you're trying to lose weight, but then you're at a friend's birthday party and you want a piece of cake, okay? So your brain then has to deal with this conflict of wanting the cake, right? Approaching the cake, <laughs> that's your approach, with not wanting to think about a painful thing like your diet, not eating the cake, avoidance. And that can sometimes show up as denial of some sort. We're avoiding the issue, right? Um, oh, one of the things I see a lot with my clients is when they're dating. So you want to go out on a date. You want to find your dream person, your partner for life. Uh, and so let's say you've met someone on a dating app or somewhere else and you're going to go on a date. But then... That's the approach, right? I want to go on a date. I want to find my dream person. That's a goal I have to be in a happy relationship. But then you've got <laughs> conflicting, there's the conflict thoughts like, he's probably going to be another loser. I go on these dates all the time uh, and nobody ever works out. I'd rather stay home. I'm going to have to get dressed and get ready and I don't want to. And I'd rather just stay home all snuggly in my jammies. That's avoidance. See it? Got it? Approach avoidance. There's a conflict. I want this thing, but I want this thing, but is pretty much what avoid <laughs> approach avoidance conflict looks like. Um, so I would say like in the big picture, it's having any goal, 
right? Any goal, that's your approach. You know, what you want to approach, your feeling good goal. And you're weighing it against a fear of failure. And that's your avoidance or feeling bad. So our unconscious brains can see many of our goals. This is crazy, but it's true. As a threat. So we avoid them. So yeah, it's great to have a partner. But what if I get hurt? Do I have to be vulnerable? Do I have to get out of my pajamas? Yeah, it's great to have a better job. But is it going to be more demanding? Will I be able to keep up? Am I going to measure up? Am I just going to get fired after two weeks and then I've left this nice safe job and then I'm in this other job? I know, because you start talking faster in your head, don't you? (laughs) You start to spin out of control on future trip. So what all this means is that you self-sabotage. It's, but it's really your psyche trying to protect you. It's your subconscious trying to keep you where you are so you'll stay safe. And over the years, you've accumulated a ton of beliefs. And these are really distorted beliefs that are driving your feelings, which then drive your behavior. Our feelings are what drive our behavior. If our thoughts drove our behavior, we'd all, you know, I'd be a size two and I would uh, be running marathons, right? If my thoughts drove my behavior uh, and I would never have bought this really cute uh, necklace, which was probably too much money. You know what I mean? Like if my thoughts drove my, but my feelings drive my behavior. I don't, it feels better to sit at home than to run a marathon. It feels... Oh, I, I, this is such a pretty necklace. I, I want it, but I want it. I don't want to think about how much it costs. You know, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> so our feelings do it. Um, the Happiness Hypothesis, Jonathan Haidt, amazing book if you haven't read it yet. Um, well, you don't have to read the books, right? I read them, but let me just say that. So that's what uh, the, the Heath brothers talked about it in Switch. Um, this idea of, um, Haidt calls it the the rider and the elephant it's kind of like your rider the rider on top of the elephant is the thoughts and the elephant is the is your feelings and the elephant will usually win a lot bigger than that little rider on top right so and it's just you know you have to think of it kind of that way um maybe i'll do another episode on that maybe we'll go there on how on motivation Write to me about that. You want to know about motivation more? Should I talk about motivation in a different way? That's not a bad idea. Okay. But I digress. Coming back. So again, the majority of these beliefs you have, these distorted beliefs, are unconscious. So you don't realize you're even having them. You don't realize they're affecting you. You don't realize they are um, curbing your behavior. And I will tell you such, such a good one. I have a client this is so recently a wonderful woman i'm working with and she has been wanting to lose weight she she says she's about 40 pounds overweight her whole family is heavy she comes from a heavier family some of them are really obese um and they you know she grew up with very poor eating habits and you know they all just eat when they're together and they'll eat all day and they talk about food and they get together around food So she's been, um, for the last really year and a half now, she's really been working on just healthier things like eating healthier, trying to, trying to move more, coming to therapy and what she's, we've been talking. And so she would, she's lost some weight, kind of gained it back, lost some weight, gained it back. She's actually, I think about 10 pounds down overall from, you know, into her 40 pound journey. But, and so I really started to ask her about her family and their weight and how they all bond about this. And what we found as she just was talking to me, you know, not, I wasn't even really, I I figured there was something here, but I wasn't exactly sure. But what we found is that they would say a lot of subtle things when she lost weight. And when she's lost it in the past, because as you might imagine, she's been on 100 diets and has lost hundreds of pounds over the years and gained it back. So, and she would hear things from her family like, oh, oh, you've, you're eating better now. You think you're better than us. Um, you, oh, I'm trying to remember the exact thing she said. It was a lot of stuff like that. Like somehow when she has lost weight that she gets, um, her family rejects her in a lot of ways. They, oh, she didn't get invited 
this is like two years ago, she said, she didn't get invited to her sister's birthday party because they said, oh, well, we knew you were dieting and there's going to be cake and other foods, so we didn't invite you. Can you believe it? Uh, I mean, yeah. And when she was growing up, of course, there's a lot of bonding about that. And, you know, if you're heavy, but you're with a lot of heavy people, you don't feel as heavy. And she's always been kind of the thin, heavy one, you know, because a lot of them, like I said, are, are have much more weight to lose. Uh, she got told again, like she was acting better than everyone else, that she was acting arrogant and sometimes not related to her weight just in general, but it was whenever she lost weight. And I said to her, wow, you know, so you have a choice of losing weight or losing your family. For her, again, distorted beliefs, not realizing, unconscious, she was being loyal, she is being loyal to her family by staying heavy. She wants to keep belonging. Who wants to lose their family? So even though there's this other life, she can't, you know, talk about your approach, avoidance, conflict. Even though there's another life, it doesn't, uh, every time she approaches it, there's this, there's this unconscious sort of stream of beliefs that come crashing in. And next thing you know, she's eating again. So this, something like this, this is self, but she's self-sabotaging. It's still what it is, but you can really see it. I see it, um, I, I, again, like the person who wrote in to me, there was a person who wrote in uh, who wasn't going to college. He kept talking to me about it, at, or he was talking about it in his email. He's not not excelling at work he wants to make more money he wants to do better at work he knows he needs to go to you know get a college degree to have better uh shots at different kinds of jobs the jobs he was wanting they were kept asking for a bachelor's but he kept missing the application dates and not starting and he had all kinds of things about it he didn't come from money nobody in his family had ever gone to college and again you know it was very obvious why he wasn't going and why he kept sabotaging, self-sabotaging and missing deadlines and not doing the things he said. There's a way of being loyal to your family. There's a way of just, this is all you've ever known. And it's scary to think about what's next. What if I try and I fail? What if I can't make it through school? What if I've always told myself, oh, I was smart, I just didn't go, but then I go and I'm not so smart. What is that gonna mean? You know, we have a certain idea of ourselves. We have a, a way that, a self-concept. And when something gets in the way of that, we usually avoid it. We want to think of ourselves a certain way. And that's when we get into denial. I know. So there's a lot of reasons why you might be self-sabotaging. and But I think they more or less generally boil down to this in some way, on some level. It's something in your psyche there's some it's like a survival strategy you had earlier in your life it's a, it's a strategy that served you earlier in your life to be a certain way but it's now become a maladaptive pattern it's now not helping you anymore it is not keeping you safe you know it, it is hurting you more than it's helping you but your brain hasn't quite caught up to that so i have two concrete ways Given that, given that knowledge, I have two concrete ways to move from this sort of self-defeating, self-sabotaging behavior to what I call self-winning behavior, you know, to, to getting your goals, to achieving what you want, and to stopping this pattern. And they go together. There's two, two tips, basically, and they, they definitely go together. You want to be doing both. So tip one is a little more, you know, bigger and tip two is very um, granular, <laughs> very specific, but I'll, g I'll give you all of it. You know, I always do. Don't, come on. I always give you all of it. I don't, I don't hold anything back. I don't be like, oh, if you don't leave a review, if you leave a review, I'll send you the tips. You know, I'm doing that bullshit, right? I give it up. I give it up right here. I don't tell you have to buy my book to learn it, although I, you should, you want to buy my book because it's fabulous, but you want to buy it because it's fabulous and you just want to have all the information in one place in an easy format to be happier in your relationships. You don't need to buy it. You know, you can, you can get all the goodies here in different ways. Okay. So that's why we do it this way because I love you. I love you. I hope you're having a good day. All right. Tip number one. 
is you got gotta. Do I say gotta? You gotta up your self awareness. If you don't notice your unhealthy patterns or your self defeating behaviors, there is no way to change them. <laughs> So you have to get better at self-awareness. It needs to be on top of your list. And I've shared this before. I've got other two other episodes on, on the four ways to be more self-aware and put just search for self-awareness on my website. You'll find them all. Um, and I'll link to them in the show notes. But in one of them, I can't remember where, I mentioned this research by Tasha, or I think it's Uric, E-U-R-I-C-H. Is that how you say that? She has a great TED talk and basically about self-awareness. And she says from her research, she says there's two types of people, people who think they're self-aware and those who actually are. (laughs) And get this, her research shows, and this is staggering, 95% of people think they're self-aware, but the real number is closer to 10 to 15%. So you might be sitting there right now going, I'm self-aware. And the chances of you actually being self-aware are 10 to 15%. <laughs> so you're saying, how can that be, Abby? I'm listening to you now. I've been to therapy. I've watched Oprah. The, the issue is we have a ton that's hidden from our conscious awareness. We, we don't realize this, but we just, you know, we feel something is true. So we put that out there, but we're actually wrong a lot of the time. And a great tool I have found to be more self-aware is to notice uh, notice who pisses you off in your day-to-day interactions. Because I will tell you right now, it is very common to be annoyed by qualities in someone that we don't like in ourselves. I'll say it again. Oh yeah, you don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. These qualities might be blind spots for you, So you might not realize that that these are things you need to work on or be aware of, but it's something in yourself that's getting reflected in some way. Um, I have a very hard time sometimes with people who are really entitled, who just think, you know, they're entitled to everything. And um, sometimes that could be people who come from money, you know, who think they hit a triple when they were born on third base kind of thing. I forget who wrote that. Um, you know, or whatever, I, I definitely get twisted. I can get twisted pretty quickly. For me, it's not because, oh, I'm actually entitled all the time. It's the opposite for me is that I don't ask for enough. I really don't. I, um, like for me to ask every time we have these podcasts for you to leave reviews and to talk about it or to buy my book, oh my God, I used to just die inside. If you listen to the first season or two of the podcast, I never ask for anything. I just don't ask for anything. Here I am giving all this fabulous information away. And I and it's like, oh, okay, thanks. Just take it. Thanks. Like I don't ask for a thing. And first of all, that's not cool because that's not a relationship. You and I are in a relationship. Relationships are reciprocal. You give, you get, you give, you get. They're not transactional. Like I'm not giving only if you leave a review, that's transactional, or only if you buy my book, that's transactional. But and not that some transactional is fine, right? You do have to buy my book to get the book. I don't just give it out for free, right? But but I'm just saying, so it's okay, you're allowed. Uh, but that asking is very hard for me. At home, it's very hard for me to ask for help or to show anything. Oy, I, it's just, it's my ego. It's my, It's all kinds of icky stuff in me that I don't like. So when people act that way, I'm mad at them. <laughs> it, it happens a lot, I've noticed, with clients who have poor boundaries. When someone has a good boundary, they get very upset, like very upset. And I've had people get upset with me with my boundaries. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at the boundaries with others. And people will get very upset with me. And that's, why am I pissing them off so much? It's because this is something they need to do that they're not doing. And so, When you get pissed off by someone, the next time someone pisses you off, instead of complaining about it, take a proverbial look in the mirror. Take a minute. Why is this bothering you so much? Why is this person or situation bothering you the way it is? Do they remind you of something you don't like about yourself? Do they remind you of someone from your past? It, it's not a given that certain things, you know, should make us angry. Everyone has different reactions to different things. So take a moment and self-reflect. 
when someone gets under your skin. I know, it's very helpful. I, I try to do this as much as I can to work on my self-awareness. And, and it's always something you have to work on. There's always blind spots. There's always, you know, I, I can listen to something I said in episode 12 that now I'm cringing at. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I, I said that. I didn't realize X about myself. It, you know, it is what it is. You're always gonna be opening up new, new eyeballs to things. And I do wanna just give a little reminder here that being mindful is not the same as being self-aware. Working on your mindfulness will help you be more self-aware. You should download my free mindfulness starter kit if you haven't yet. I've got a ton of episodes on mindfulness as I do on self-awareness, but I wanna remind you that just working on mindfulness isn't enough. That's not actually, it'll help your self-awareness, but it's not the same thing. I am, for example, self-aware that I'm very controlling, but I'm not always mindful about being controlling. <laughs> or I'm self-aware that I'm controlling and I'm mindful about it, but then I don't realize that something I'm doing is controlling that I thought wasn't controlling. So you know what I mean? There's just, there's a way that they work in tandem, but don't get it twisted. Separate them out. It's uh, very, very important. So work on your mindfulness, work on your self-awareness, but self-awareness is really what I'm talking about here in a big way. And again, you can listen to the other episodes for more tips on how to be more self-aware because I have them all there already for you. I know, because I love you. All right, tip number two, and this is very specific. I want you to, to I'm gonna say journal, but it's not necessarily journaling, but it's writing things down in a very specific way. So journaling can definitely be, or writing things down in a specific way can be a great way to change self-sabotaging behavior, uh, but it has to be, again, in a certain way. So here's how I want you to do it, ready? Here's how I want you to do it. Now, if you are driving right now and you cannot write something down or you're just in the middle of something and you can't write this down, it's, if again, go to my website, abbymetcalf.com. Go to the relationship tips and tools, that's where the blog lives. And right there, it'll all be written out. You can copy and paste it from there. It'll all be, there. I know. The, the blog has pretty much everything I talk about in the podcast, but maybe not all the examples and, you know, not maybe, it doesn't have all the examples. It doesn't have the same detail that um, the ep these episodes do. And, and you don't get to hear my melodious voice. And, but I always have, you know, if I give a tip or a tool, I'm going to have those specifics there. So just so you know, if you need to do that at any point. Uh, and you can just copy and paste from there. It's okay. It's okay. I want you to have the information. So here's what I want you to do. Piece of paper. I would rather you wrote this out than typed it out. So I'm just saying, we again, there's research on this. It's a little better to write than to type. But if you, if you feel better typing and that's the only way you can do it, then get out your laptop and do it that way. Uh, or your phone these days, I guess. All right. So first, I want, here's how I want it to be. I want to, but I keep thinking, so I keep doing. Okay? So I want to, and then you're going to name your goal. I want to lose weight be in a healthy relationship, uh, eat better, uh, I don't know, uh, save money, whatever it is, right? I Whatever you're sabotaging. I want to and say what it is. That's your goal, your aspiration, your objective. But I keep thinking, now you're going to name the thoughts you are having about the thing. I'll give you some examples in a minute. And then, so I keep doing, and then you're going to name the behaviors that you've been doing, okay? So... For example, you might write, um, I want to wake up, oh, I want to wake up earlier and work out. That's one I just had a client do. Uh, she, uh, actually it's a he, sorry. He wants to wake up earlier and work out. He's been wanting to do that for a while. And we, and we did do this together. And so, but I keep thinking, I keep thinking, uh, he said things like, it's going to be really hard and I'll be so tired in the morning. I keep thinking about how tired I'm going to be. Uh, I keep thinking, it's, is it really going to help anyway? If I want to be healthier, I also have to look at my, my eating and I eat like crap. I'm going to need to figure out an eating plan. Uh, I've tried this so many times to work out. It never, I never do it for very long. Do you see? This, these are the thoughts. I know. You, so you got to take a minute and really think about what you're thinking 
about this thing that you say you want to do. Really think about it. And then, so I keep, so I keep, and then, then say what the behaviors you keep doing. Now you have your thoughts. Now you have your behaviors. So I keep, and he said something like, I keep sleeping in and then beating myself up about it. Or I wake up early a couple times and then I quit because it just sucks. <laughs> okay. I'm out. So writing this out, you can see how hard you've made things for yourself. You really can. When you have these kinds of, again, distorted beliefs, these belief, and you're going to say to me, they're not distorted. Yeah, they are. It's not that hard to be tired. You're okay. You're not going to die. Get over yourself. It's okay. It's okay. Your whole day is not going to suck because you're a little tired. I mean, grow up. Like, put on your big boy pants, your big girl pants. Give me a break. But, you know, when you really lean into it, it sucks more than life. So I never do anything I say I'm going to do. I always, oh, the never and always language. Not true. If you're listening right now, you've got your shit together enough that it can't be an always or a never. It just can't. You Even when you say I never stick to things, well, if you change your definition, you worked out for two weeks or three weeks. That's not never. You stuck to it for a little while. So it needs to be, I have trouble, you know, sticking, staying with a workout past three weeks. Maybe you could say that, but it has a very different energy about it when you say it that way, right? Okay. So now you're going to write, what else could I think about waking up earlier to work out in this, right? That's the example I just gave. What else could I think about whatever the thing is, whatever your goal was, And then I want you to problem solve from those new thoughts. So in this example, you might write, what else can you think? Just because something hasn't worked in the past doesn't mean it won't work now. Uh, I might also think, uh, um, I might be tired the first few mornings, but I'll get used to it after a week. It's, I could think it's not that bad to be tired. It's okay. I know I'm going to feel really good about myself when I make this a habit. Uh, First things first. I don't need to tackle my eating or anything else. I'm just going to get up Monday, Wednesday, Friday and work out early. Right now, it's just about getting there on the days I've committed to. There's nothing else. Okay? So when you write like that, it shifts. Can't you feel it? It just feels different, doesn't it? It doesn't feel so doom and gloom. It doesn't feel like there's no hope. This is how, you know, you get the brain moving in the right direction. So now we can problem solve from that way of thinking. Uh, I'm going, so what can I do? I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put the alarm across the room. So I have to get out of bed and I can't hit the snooze button. I'm going to tell myself at night before I go to sleep, I'm going to wake up. It's going to be good. I'm really proud of you and you're going to be okay. Even if you're tired. I'm going to ask my sister to meet me at the gym for the next week. I'm going to reward myself with a latte after at my favorite cafe after every workout. Do you see this? I'm going to keep the focus on each day and not look ahead. I'm good, right? There's a million, we start boom, 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 right? We start problem solving from this place and it is a beautiful thing. We call this in the big word world of psychology, we call this cognitive reframing. So I'm always taking little psychological things and breaking them down into easy, biteable parts. I have done previous episodes on how not to overthink um, on rational motive therapy. I will link to those in the show notes. I have done them if you want to go deep on re- cognitive reframing. But basically, cognitive reframing is when we reframe our thoughts. So we start to think differently. And since we, remember, you feel the way you think when you, when you think of that, you feel the way you think. So once you can think differently, then you can start to feel differently about the goal or the situation. And then that elephant, remember the rider and the elephant, (laughs) you know, that elephant is the feelings have shifted and you can kind of point that elephant a little easier, those feelings a little easier. Once you're feeling more positive, you're more motivated, you're less afraid, you can take different actions, you can be more consistent, right? Um, It was how to stop overthinking and let things go that bother you. That was the other episode. I remember the title now. Again, I'll link to it in the show notes. But the cognitive reframe is what it's all about. Psychology, cognitive behavioral therapy, all of it is built on this 
tenant and it's been around a long time because it works, because it is effective. It is the way home. It is the way to stop self-defeating, self-sabotaging behaviors. So I want you to do that one-two punch. I want you to download the Mindfulness Starter Kit. I want you to maybe go to the Relationship Tips and Tool page and go look up this and read it again. Read it now, like kind of, it's short, it's a short read. I even, I think at the top we tell you how long the read is. I think it says it's a seven minute read or it's a five minute read or a 10 minute read or whatever. So, you know, it's not much of your time, but to really let this information sink in, the first kind of, li or listen again to the podcast. You know, if you do better with listening, then listen a second time to this episode. But what you want to do is not just hear this and go, oh, that sounds good, and move along. I want you to stop self-sabotaging. I want you to change your life. I know that there is a beautiful, gorgeous, amazing life that you deserve that is right ahead of you. Some of you have it right now, a lot of it, but if you're listening and you've listened to the end now, you know that there's some pieces that you're missing. You know that there's more that you want and, and or you're feeling frustrated in just kind of this one area or this one thing maybe. And this is the way to get through it. It really is. This is the way to make the transformation. So there you have it. That is our episode on self-sabotaging behavior. As always, I am, I'm really happy you're here. I love this time we spend together. I'm so appreciative of the kind words and the emails and the reviews that you leave. It uh, fills my heart with, fills my heart, joy and love. If you haven't signed up for my weekly love letter yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. People love the love letter. I get, I get more reactions from that than probably anything I do. It comes out every Wednesday. I do not bombard with you the emails. It's just on Wednesdays. And it is a little story or a little take on life from my perspective to help you feel motivated and inspired in your week. That is all it is meant for. There is no sneaky <laughs> other goal I have to get you to do something. Every now and then, maybe twice a year, I sell something and I'll give you a coupon for it if you want on there because you're part of my list. But otherwise... That you just get love every week. That's what it's meant for, and that's what I do. So um, I know it's hard to think about people not having ulterior motives when they're doing things, especially these days. I definitely make money from the podcast now. After five seasons, I should be, you would hope, right? Um, and I'm proud of that. I love that I didn't start out that way. I didn't start out thinking, oh, I'm going to do a podcast so I can make some money at all. I started out this other way, and then because... You know, that's how God, the universe works. When we're doing things we love, they often money comes, which is great. Uh, and I'm not, I feel proud of that. And I do hope you go buy stuff. I do hope you do things. But I know that there are plenty of free things that you don't have to, that uh, you can get so much great information and really change your life just from here. And that feels like my mission in life. So that feels really, I'm gonna, I get choked up talking about it, but that feels like my mission. And uh I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you're working on yourself because again, you deserve it. All right. I love and adore you. Have such an amazing week and I will talk to you real soon.